dear Spanish friend, Juan Puchades. You are arguably the best aquascaper in Europe, at least for me. Thanks for being here at Green Aqua. Thanks for making this beautiful workshop tank that you guys see right next to me. We made two videos on this. We made the workshop video itself with uh, Juan. And we made the tweaking video. I made a couple of changes on this tank with Juan's guidance. Thanks for that. And uh, most of you guys have told me, Juan included, that uh, you liked the way that I proceeded with the first rescape or the first tweaking of this layout. Okay, so today we're gonna do a second tweaking without Juan's knowledge, and I'll explain to you why we have to do that. Welcome to the beautiful world of aquascaping. Okay, so why the hell do I touch this? Why? Check this picture out that I took just before the beginning of this video shooting session here. Check it out. Wide angle lens, low angle, perfect. It is a perfect IAPLC level tank. This would have been perfect actually for the IAPLC 2022 because the deadline is already past due. So you're not gonna be able to submit it for this year. But you can see my point. This is competition level, people. You can see the depth, you can see the layout, you can see the lines, it is perfect. My main problem with this tank is that if you look at this tank from a low angle, from a competition angle, it's working perfectly. But as soon as you watch it from a standing height, the whole picture becomes very monochromatic, the moss is overgrown, you don't see anything. It's, it's, you don't have enough details on the top. I need another layer, I need some more interesting issues, I need some color, some detail in the tank. So that's what I'm gonna try to do today. Removing a lot of moss, adding a lot of stones as another layer in the background, and then have the stamp plants visible only at the water surface level. And hopefully the whole layout will look more full and hopefully the whole layout will have a lot more perspective from a standing height. So stay with us, here we go. So what I did yesterday is I went biking and I hurt my hands, obviously I touched something. So I need to wear gloves, I'm sorry for that. We need to stop the filter, that's the first thing that we do. And secondly, we need to take a little bit of water out. Gary's here today to help me. We have a huge problem with Monte Carlo because we used Monte Carlo as an epiphyte plant and as you guys probably know, Monte Carlo is not really an epiphyte plant, so it didn't really help us. It floats up and it's a daily problem cleaning the surface from Monte Carlo. I don't have a problem with my right hand though, so one glove is enough. See, we have a lot of space here. This was not visible at all. Check this out. one by one. I so hate this. Okay, so let's use the rocks. I 
I need more rocks. Always one more, yeah. The one more rule of green aqua. Nothing will happen to the stem plants if you place some rocks on top. We need peaks, more peaks in the background like this. And we'll need to raise the background a little bit. We need some epiphyte plants. Ooh! Ooh! What Gary is doing, that he's cleaning the Anubias Nana Bonsai. Okay, and in the meantime, I've got the small bucephalandras. Now we have the Monte Carlo. If this is not going to get yellow in a week, guys, then we're lucky. I'm reusing all the Ricardia that we had in the previous scape and applying it to the rock to add some detail. So Aaron has some critics, guys, listen well. So the stones that you just added, I think they have different textures. Now, now they have the same structure. It gets better. See, the same structure. Okay guys, so let me recap what we did. We added tons of rocks in the background, glued the rocks to each other, go for an easy maintenance for the guys. I started brushing the rocks and I added a lot of pebbles in the foreground. So that's what we did hardscape wise. And then we added some Monte Carlo to the rocks and uh, Anubias to the rocks and also Bucephalandra in between the cracks. We will see the red plants in a week or two after they grow up. We replanted a lot of moss and now we're going to fill the tank up with water so that we can see what's to be brushed. Other than that, I think in two hours, we did a quite a good boosting session. Gary, I think we're good. This just got a huge boost now. Some of you guys have asked us what we're using and we're using the two big containers of 350 or 400 liters. So we have almost a thousand liters of water. Plus when you're using it, we have a very strong, actually two strong reverse osmosis systems. While I'm using it here, it's also working and making new water. So I can probably use a thousand, two hundred liters in one go. Rule number one, never use spiky moss. Rule number two, don't forget rule number one. The moment that you get rid of them, this whole scape starts to look really neat. It's okay. You can almost clap now because I'm almost ready. Where's my tweezer? All the time that I'm building something, there's no place for these.
Ladies and gentlemen, we are ready with uh, this boosting session. It obviously needs to clear up a little bit more. Right now you're gonna see how this whole thing looks after like a week or so. We're just gonna wait until the uh, stem plants in the background um, will grow up to be visible behind the rocks a lot better. Let me know in the comments, what do you think about this? And we're going to ask Juan Puchades his opinion and we're gonna show it to you guys. If he likes it, if he doesn't like it, he's gonna let us know. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.